Hey, what's up? George Slinsky here with you on the Sports Geek. Today we continue with our NFL preview piece and our focus, the Indianapolis Colts. Philip Rivers, only season a year ago with the Colts, took them to 11-5, got them to the playoffs, but decided to retire. And now a lot of changes have come their way, and the injury bug has plagued them before the start of the regular season. We'll talk about where the sports books stand on the Colts and what bets you should place on the Colts. I've got a couple that I think are going to help you make some really big money, what their schedule looks like, and what they've done in free agency. Remember to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell if you want. Leave a comment in the comments section. Since Carson Wentz and Quentin Nelson both got hurt in training camp, the sports books have dipped down a little bit on the Colts, not as high as they were on them at one point. 45 to 1 odds via Bet Online to win the Super Bowl. 22 to 1 odds to win the AFC and plus 190 odds to win their own division. I don't think they're going to be in the running for either of them. Maybe they'll be in second place at best in the AFC South, but ultimately I think that's Tennessee's for the taking. As for their win total, this is my go to bet. The line is set at nine, and I like the under. At worst, I think it washes, and that's at a plus 110 rate. Their schedule is not all that easy, and again, they're going to be missing their best offensive lineman and their quarterback, Carson Wentz, whom they traded for in the offseason. Not going to be easy transitioning to somebody else. As for the over, if you like it, it's at minus 130 odds. To make the playoffs, a minus 115 rate. To miss out on the playoffs, a minus 115 too. I don't see the Colts as a playoff team. They won 11 games a year ago. Again, there's a chance Carson Wentz plays week one, but it's highly unlikely. Same thing with Quinton Nelson. I don't see them as a playoff team. Minus 115 odds is a pretty good line. As for Carson Wentz for MVP, 51 odds. Regardless if he plays week one and was 100% healthy, don't touch it. We have no idea what Carson Wentz is going to be like. This is a guy that got benched for Jalen Hurts. Really struggled last year with Philadelphia. As for Frank Reich, I think he's a terrific head coach, but I think this year might be a little bit of a struggle. Don't touch him for coach of the year. Right now, the line at 22 to 1. It's a solid line. I just don't think the Colts are going to be as good as they were a year ago. As for defensive player of the year, they just locked up Darius Leonard, a beast of an outside linebacker. You should put money on him for defensive player of the year. He'll at least finish in the top five in my eyes. 33 to 1 odds. That's a solid rate. As for DeForest Buckner, a really good interior defensive lineman, had a breakout year last season with Indianapolis, did some really good things in San Francisco too prior to that. You should put money on him too, 66 to 1 odds. Definitely put more money on Leonard, but putting money on Buckner is not a bad idea. As for Defensive Rookie of the Year, they took Quiddy Pay in the first round out of the University of Michigan. Probably going to start right away. Now, there's some guys that are going to make it really tough, like Christian Barmore, Patrick Sertan, J.C. Horn, but... 12 to 1 odds for pay to win defensive rookie of the year. There's some value. I wouldn't say bet big, but it's not bad to put money on it. As for a year ago, I mentioned they went 11 and 5, got into the playoffs, lost in the first round. Offensively, much improved. Really went by running back by committee. 28.2 points per game, ninth best in the NFL. Defensively, solid too, just under 23 points per game. That was 10th best. So again, they had a really good year. and did a really good job of controlling the turnover differential. Preserved the ball and forced turnovers. But ultimately, without their best offensive lineman and without their best quarterback, or at least their number one as of now, Carson Wentz, I have some legitimate concerns. Now, they did upgrade a little bit at offensive line this season. Eric Fisher, they signed in the offseason. Same thing with Sam Tevy. But Fisher suffered that season-ending injury in the playoffs with Kansas City. We don't know when he's going to be back. As for their losses, Jacoby Brissett would be perfect right now. He'd be starting, assuming Gwens can't go. We really don't know who's going to start at quarterback right now. We're going to see things in the preseason, and then I assume Frank Wright will announce a starter. They also lost on the defensive line, Justin Houston. Very solid defensive line, played in Kansas City. Had a nice season with Indianapolis a year ago. He's gone to Baltimore. That's a tough loss. Same thing with inside linebacker, Anthony Walker, and another defensive lineman, Danico Autry. So, like I said, they upgrade a little bit on the old line, especially with Fisher when they get him healthy. But they lost some things on defense, too. And I think they're a team that you're going to see go from being in the playoffs a year ago to missing out. As for their schedule, I said it's not easy, and it's not. They've got to play Tennessee twice. Now, they do get Jacksonville and Houston twice. That definitely helps. But then they've got everybody in the NFC West, and they've got them early. And without Wentz, that could be really bad luck. Plus, they've got the AFC East, Miami, New England, not going to be easy, not to mention Buffalo, 
And then they got Baltimore, Tampa Bay, and Las Vegas. None of those games are easy. That's why I really like the under of nine wins. It's at a plus 110 rate. I don't see the Colts being a playoff team. I think this is going to be a year where you're going to see them go down. As always, I'm your host, Jared Slinsky. It says right there on my shirt. I'll see you next time here on the Sports Geek.